Submarines, one of the most recognizable and well-known class of warships found in modern fleets. Over the history of modern naval warfare, the submarine has been one of the most technologically advanced machines employed by worldwide navies. As with any weapon, there have been countless attempts to modify the design to make them even more capable or to allow them to conform to established doctrines. Many of these attempts created vessels that were unique, complete failures, or just outright bizarre. One particular design that ticks all those boxes is that of the M-Class submarine built for the Royal Navy, and today we will be looking at this relatively unknown class of underwater battleships and why they failed. Holding the title of the world's largest navy for centuries prior to the Cold War, the Royal Navy has seen its share of naval projects that have resulted in strange designs. Some were successful, such as the case of the HMS Dreadnought, and some were less than successful, such as the HMS Captain. While not related, the M-Class came about and technically succeeded the disastrous K-Class fleet submarines replacing the four remaining K-Class orders. The K-Class, like the M's, was designed during a period of time when the world's navies were still attempting to understand the submarine's role in a modern battle fleet. Acting on intelligence reports about recent German submarine developments, the Admiralty decided to build a set of fleet submarines which required them to have great speeds while surfaced so that they may cruise with surface units such as dreadnoughts. In 1915, the Admiralty approved the design of a class of submarines equipped with steam engines. Yes, you heard that right, steam engines in a submarine. Before you rush to the comments to say it, yes, modern nuclear submarines are technically steam powered, but they are not comparable to these in any way. The K-Class would quickly become infamous for its many faults, with the most egregious being the massive size and propulsion. Their size meant that depending on the angle of dive, there would be 59 to 170 feet of difference in depth between bow and stern. There was also the issue of water being able to reach the steam engines through the boat's funnels, which actually happened to HMS K-13 in 1917. To summarize, these boats were the definition of curse by design, and if you would like a video on them, let us know down below. At the same time as the approval of the K-Class, a novel design was being brought to life that sought to give the British a significant advantage over the Germans in the realm of shore bombardment. The answer to this goal was the titular M-Class, and it is difficult to miss the one feature that sets this design apart from its peers. What you are looking at is an Armstrong Whitworth Mark IX 12-inch 40 caliber naval gun taken from spares left over from the formidable class pre-dreadnought battleships. The decision to mount a 12-inch gun was one of two proposals, with the other armed with one or two 7.5-inch guns, with the 12-inch winning out due to the perceived effectiveness over the smaller caliber. At first, the Royal Navy's head submarine officer, Commodore Sidney S. Hall, wanted two 12-inch guns on the subs mounted fore and aft. It appears that this request was realized to be too outlandish and only one was mounted. Eventually, the mission for the boats would change to merchant raiding, which is understandable as one single large caliber gun would not be entirely effective for shore bombardment. When mounted in the boats, the gun mount had an elevation of 20 degrees, depression of 5 degrees, and a relatively good traverse of 15 degrees to either side. By now, you may be wondering, why would you use a gun to do this when you could use the torpedo armament most submarines are known for? Normally, you would be correct in this question. However, torpedoes were still unrefined weapons. Commodore Hall is said to have stated, No case is known of a ship of war being torpedoed when underway at a range outside 1,000 yards. On the other hand, it was thought that if a submarine surfaced and fired such a large caliber shell, the target ship would have no ability to evade and be sunk as a consequence. In addition, it was also believed that the boats could carry more shells than torpedoes. 
Despite the disparaging commentary towards torpedoes, the boats were still equipped with torpedo tubes, four 18-inch tubes for M1 and M2, and 21-inch tubes for M3 and M4. The subs also had a 3-inch gun mounted aft of the sail in a disappearing mount that could be stowed when not in use. The main issue that arose with the boats was related to their massive armament, specifically in terms of reloading. As you likely know, battleship caliber weapons are not well known for their brisk reloading rates. When in their intended mounts aboard the Formidable class, it was noted that their rate of fire was about 1.5 rounds per minute. This, expectedly, was significantly diminished when placed inside a more compact mount as part of a submarine, around 0.33 rounds per minute, which made the entire reload time around 3 minutes. To make things worse, the submarine could only reload when surfaced, and therefore would have been at risk of attack during that time. To remedy this, crews developed a method that became known as dip chick, where the submarine would quickly surface at about 1200 yards, 1100 meters from the target, fire, and then submerge again. This procedure completely disregarded reloading, but at that range it was nearly guaranteed that they would hit the target. The total time that dip chicking took was about 75 seconds on average, however it has been stated that the record was as little as 35. Now that we have covered the armament, let's take a look at the other aspects of the boats. The general design followed that of previous submarines, with a total length for M1 and M2 being 295.9 feet, 90.14 meters, while M3 and M4 were 305.9 feet, 93.19 meters due to their larger torpedo tubes. They had a beam of 24.8 feet, 7.52 meters, draft of 15.9 feet, 4.8 meters, and a displacement of 1,601 tons surfaced and 1,950 tons when submerged. Around 65% of their total length incorporated a double hull, with the pressure vessel allowing the boats to reach a depth of 200 feet, 60.96 meters. For those interested, they were also equipped with 20 ballast tanks, two of which were used for stability while underwater, that were augmented with scoop valves that assisted with quick diving. Seemingly learning from the failures of the K-Class, these boats were powered by two Vickers 12-cylinder diesel engines that produced a total of 1,200 brake horsepower and were connected to each propeller shaft to spin two three-bladed propellers. Also coupled to the shafts were electric motors that were able to produce up to 1,600 brake horsepower. The boats were able to carry 76 tons of fuel, although M2 could carry 110 tons, and their batteries were able to sustain full speed for one and a half hours. When surfaced, they were designed to have an endurance of 4,000 nautical miles at 10 knots, 2,500 if at 16 knots, and a submerged endurance of 80 nautical miles at 2 knots, 10 nautical miles at 10 knots. It was reported that M1 reached a top speed of 15.4 knots during trials. With the popularity of cruiser submarines in the interwar period that saw the mounting of medium caliber cannons, you may be wondering why such a large caliber as that on the M class was not used again. As one can expect, the boats saw a fair share of issues related to their unique design. As mentioned previously, the guns that these boats were equipped with were entirely inefficient due to their long reload rate. This was made worse by the fact that the Royal Navy never actually performed trials to see if the single gun was even going to be able to sink a merchant ship with a single shot. The improvement in submarine and torpedo design also negated the necessity for such large armament. Despite their impressive nature, the M-Class was not to have a significant legacy. Only M1 was able to be finished prior to the end of World War I, but she was unable to see any action. With the end of the war and the threat of the Germans removed, the boats found themselves in an awkward position due to having their primary missions effectively erased. They would remain in service, however, and mainly participated in various exercises. M1 would find herself having a short career, as in 1925 she collided with the ship Vital, where the gun and its housing were ripped off the submarine and caused the entire interior to be flooded. M1's wreck was discovered in 1999 at a depth of 73 meters, 240 feet. M2 and M3 would see the loss of their guns due to Articles 11 and 12 of the Washington Naval Treaty, which restricted the main caliber of non-battleships to 8 inches or under. 
M2 was converted in late 1927, early 1928 to a seaplane carrier with her gun and its housing being replaced with a watertight hangar equipped with a crane for manipulating her plane. The plane in question was one Parnall Pito, which was primarily used for reconnaissance and launched using a catapult situated where the gun used to be. It is stated that the crew were capable of an impressive launch procedure, surfacing, launching, and submerge in just five minutes. Unfortunately, the submarine would sink in 1932 with all hands. It is still not confirmed what caused her to sink, but theories suggest that her hangar doors were opened and allowed water to flood in. Her wreck still remains off the coast of Dorset at a depth of about 100 feet 30 meters, making her an accessible wreck for divers. M3 would be the only member of the class to not sink and was converted into a mine layer in 1927. Being able to carry up to 100 mines, she was also equipped with a new casing on top of her hull that contained two mine rails that would flood and allow for underwater mine laying. This equipment was installed for trials for the upcoming Porpoise class submarine and would be successful with M3 being scrapped in 1932 instead of meeting a fateful end at sea. The M class of submarines was an exceptionally unique take on the doctrine of submarine warfare, arming the ships with a gun caliber only found on the mightiest class of warship of the day, the battleship. She was a product of some of the Royal Navy's most experienced commanders of the day and a result of the combination of multiple different ideas on what a submarine should be able to do at sea. While the M-Class was theoretically the most powerful submarine ever built in terms of armament until the Cold War, developments in technology would see their design fall out of favor and as such we can only look back and imagine what could have been had these ships been successful. Still, these submersible battleships live on in the pages of history as a strange solution to technological limitations. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to show your support for the channel by liking the video and subscribing so you don't miss future uploads. We're nearly at 10,000 subscribers already, and the more viewers these videos reach, the more we can improve the quality of the content. We already have several other videos covering other interesting submarine designs, so be sure to check those out as well. I'll also be posting a video on my main channel discussing the enormous T-35 landship design if you are interested in another story of a failed attempt to create a military vehicle. Hope to see you there or on the next episode of Sales and Salvos.